Yes. Thank you, BFFs. I mean, honestly, no, seriously, where would we be without our sisters? Like, yeah. and the sisters that have known us for two years or 25 plus years. I have Spelman sisters in the house, so I know HU is representing uh, my classmate from Spelman. Um, but where would we be? And I, I just want to say, and I know we have this prompt, mm -hmm. but yeah. Cody is one of those people where I met and I literally was just like, there was this power over her and it was like through a work function. And then when I got to really understand what you and Tommy were doing with Black Love, I, I must tell you, it, it inspired me um, in so many different ways because I know we talk about Black Love in terms of relationships um, and in and, and partnership, but Black Love is the sisterhood too. And so I'm just so grateful that you asked me to be here with all of you today. Um, you all are beautiful, and I just celebrate you. Thank you. I just you. celebrate, because yeah. you, are, you are so incredibly just dynamic, inspiring to me. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. So to, to that point, our first little prompt here is to share how we met and why we appreciate each other. And so we did meet at an event yep. because Ty hosts a lot of events. You do a lot with Chris Spencer, who's a homie and Black Love fan. That's right. That's right. Um, but I feel like it was recent that we really talked, and um, it started, I think, with me just being like, "You want to, you want to speak at the U retreat?" And then yeah. you invited me to do an IG live, or actually, you wrote, she wrote me, and I had already been thinking about inviting her to be here. So it just was like very synergistic. I, because I, I was, I saw, I. I, I watch a lot, like, you know, and sometimes I don't participate, but I also just feel, and Kelly will say this, Tanika will say this, people who know me, like, I'll just reach out because I'm like, I see you working, and I think that's what I did. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I see what you're doing, um, and I wanted to celebrate and honor you for that, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm truly just inspired by you. And so when we met, I think it was at ABFF, mm -hmm. at an ABFF event, mm -hmm. or was it? Not the one where I was like. No, I can't, I, well, there was one with the We twins, were sitting either at a Hilton table or at a wall. It was one of my yeah. clients. And was it Regine who introduced us? No. I feel like it was the Lexus. The Lexus. Okay, so someone Uptown. introduced Anywho. us and then, and then we just really, really connected. So yes. I just love to see it. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so wait, I, I want to start with a question. For okay, you. perfect. Okay. Perfect. Sorry. Because I was on your website mm -hmm. and it says that you are a believer in the power of women to do it all and look stunning in the process, mm -hmm. which I love. Mm -hmm. But I'm also like, what does do it all mean to you? Whatever it means to the individual. Okay. Um, I was just having a conversation with Tanika and Kelly about, you know, the fact that I've been doing too much <laughs> of it all mm -hmm. lately. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I, I think that, you know, I went to an all girls high school in Newark, New Jersey, and then I went to Spelman College. So I think being in these spaces where you're around women, I realized doing it all and what having it all yeah. and that experience looks like is different for everyone. And I honor that because mm -hmm. I've been surrounded by women where it's shared, but mm -hmm. it's also not myopic. Um, and I believe like whatever, however we choose to show up, that's our agency. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just so interesting that we're living in the time now, finally, where there are conversations about this on a larger scale. But we always knew this to be true, right? And so I just, I, I feel like as a sister, as a woman, it's my duty to support other women yeah. and also do it on my own terms. Yeah. yeah, and what I hear too in terms of doing it all is like knowing when it's too much, Girl. right? And I think um, yeah. <laughs> I've been there for a while. I saw a meme recently and I shared some of y'all, we talk, um, well I actually put it on my social that said adulting is saying, after this slows down, I'll, you know, I'll be available or after this slows down, it'll all be okay over and over again until you die. And I was like, oh my God, the truth in that, like I felt seen, mm. but I also felt like sad. Mm. Cause I was like, I've been saying that for 15 years. Oh, yeah. after, after this event, <laughs> after yeah. this month, yeah. it'll be fine. And it's not. That brings up a really important po point into the point of your question of what does doing it all mean? Yeah. I think we as women, as we have all this agency, we also have to be really honest with ourselves about what priorities are, and everything is not a priority at the same time. Yeah. And also recognizing that after you've done certain things, if there is to be a next, you have to release something. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I'm I'm yeah. learning right now, like what are the things that I have to release mm -hmm. in order to make room for the other thing or those other things? And so I don't know. It's and, and I think that that's part of the difficulty 
I think in leadership, yes. I, don't, I, I think it's not just about being a boss, but I think in right. leadership and whatever that looks like in your life and your family yeah. life and your work life, um, you're always like trying to lead. And mm -hmm. I actually, I said to the guy I'm seeing, I was like, look, I'll take your lead. I'm tired of leading. <laughs> I feel and, you. And I mean, that's real for me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, that's one of the blessings of Brown Girl Jane and having, mm -hmm. you know, business partners and, you know, not running the business alone. Yeah. It's like, because I, I've been at the in the driver's seat for so long, and quite frankly, I'm, yeah. it, it, it wears. And I think that's why I pushed up against the word boss. Yeah. Because it is seen as like, I think as like everyone else's perception of doing it all. Like, look at you, you're a boss, it looks amazing. And it's like, I think that being a boss, or at least my definition and where I aspire to be, is figuring out what I have to do, what I need to do, what I can delegate, mm -hmm. and and having creating a sense of peace yeah. for myself. Yeah. Because this boss is tired. A bossing. And, yeah. <laughs> and I and I um and I feel like I need to just create boundaries. Yeah. I need to offload, and so. That's what I'm struggling with, but I, but at least I'm aware. So I, I'm grateful of, of the awareness. How do you how do you hold yourself accountable to that? And like, are there questions? I was sharing again earlier, like one of the things I'm learning and I talk about, but I'm also teaching myself to mm -hmm. really live, is give what you can, mm -hmm. take what you need. Mm -hmm. And for us as women, it's always been give, 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 and we're heralded and celebrated for giving. Mm -hmm. And like then actually people walk around like a badge about I'm a giver. Yeah. <laughs> great. And, and <laughs> you know, like, and that's great. Right. But what about right. being a receiver? Yeah. And what if we yeah. take the, 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 the oof off of it? Like, it's not about being a taker, but being a receiver. Because mm -hmm. if we're going to get, and so I'm learning. Yeah. And I'm trying to live in that space. So yeah. when you give, like, how do you feel emboldened and empowered and given? And then how do you feel empowered and receiving mm -hmm. as a as a leader? Well, I would say one thing I've learned from my husband, who's also my business partner, is like to say what I need. And it's annoying, it's actually a double-edged sword, I realized this yesterday, because sometimes I just want him and others to like be more intuitive. Mm -hmm. But there is power and there is like necessity in being able to identify for yourself what you need and to say it. And that, to me, is still a journey, right? Because yeah. like I said, I'm just waiting for somebody to be like, girl, you seem tired. Yeah. Let me fix it. Yeah. Um, and so, I'm, I, but I do think it's an important skill. And that for me is like, that's how I give to myself. That's how I give those I love the tools to see me and help me is to actually articulate what I need Yeah. when I know. I don't always know. And, and I, I think the other thing, too, is recognizing that everyone is not going to have the same level of responsibility and yeah. accountability to supporting our needs. Yeah. And so I think that that's why tribe is important. And, and not just, like, I don't want it to seem hierarchical, but, like, there there is hierarchy, right? Yeah. Like, where you know that they're going to be the people that's, like, no matter what, mm -hmm. hold down, hold down. And then they're going to other people that, and other people come in at different times. Like, everyone's not going to be the same type of provider you know, for your needs yeah. or what yeah. have you. And so that's why you have groups. There are people that you talk to about work only. And then there are people you talk to about your, your mess. And, you know, and, and so I think it's like having, you know, those tribes. And there's people you don't have to say anything, anything to, to at right, at all. And they're like, yeah, exactly. And they hand you wine. Yes. And they introduce you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, cheers wait. to y'all. Yeah. <laughs> cheers, cheers to mine and cheers to many of you yes, in this room who absolutely. are that for one another. Um, okay, so when you look at yourself and all of your accomplishments, right, what I see from the outside, right, these many experiences that you've had at, at uh, very well-known magazines and, and networks, do you feel successful? How do you define success? I don't believe in success. Yeah. They would I, like, the people would like more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. No, um, success has always been really hard for me as a word because I think that the way I was conditioned and trained to understand what it meant, mm -hmm. it meant that you were arriving somewhere. And I've made a very conscious decision in life that I don't want to arrive anywhere. I want to continue to evolve. Mm -hmm. I want it to be um, always moving, but not so much where you're never happy. I, I definitely have joy and happiness even in some of the challenging circumstances that come with some of these experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I always want to be growing and evolving. So success has never been something that I, I, um, I subscribe to in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, have I felt like I've had 
achievements and accomplishments, I will tell you for a long time, um, and I don't know, I actually probably need to talk more about this in therapy. Um, <laughs> if you don't know, figure it out there. I'm like, wait a minute. It's real. Um, but I, I do think, I think I've undermined a lot of the achievements that I've had. And I think that was because, quite frankly, if I'm being honest and truly vulnerable, um, I was born to teenage parents in Newark, New Jersey in 1978. My grandparents helped raise me with, um, with my mother. Um, and I think, you know, from the impetus of my birth, I was told that I had to do. Mm -hmm. And actually, Bevy Smith said this on IG, uh, my morning mindset the other day. She was like, you know, Ty, you were grown as a kid. And it was because I, I lived in these, these spaces. And so I never celebrated a lot of that. Yeah. I never celebrated um, some of the achievements. And I remember, mm -hmm. like, when I was named the beauty director at Seventeen Magazine, and I was 25 and the first African American and youngest in history. And this was before social media, y'all. So it wasn't nobody outside of the fashion industry or media industry talking about it. It wasn't mm -hmm. a thing. Yeah. And I just remember, like, it's another job. I was making six figures, I was 25, that was nice, but I was like, it's just a job for me. But on the flip side, I think that my approach in that, not letting these roles and these experiences or achievements um, have anything over my head has also worked in my favor, because they don't define me. Yeah. Yeah. They do yeah. not define yeah. me. Yeah. And that's where I rest, because yeah. a job is a job is a job, and I don't rest there. So I don't know, what about you for success? I just thought, I mean, <laughs> yes, it's a job. first of all. It's a job. So I'll say this, right? Um, I wrote the question. Okay. But I didn't have, any, I didn't have an that answer. Was a, I didn't know, have like, an answer. I'm, I, so what is success and what does it feel I like? I actually love what you said from the standpoint of like, you don't believe in success. And what I realize in, in thinking about the question and listening to your answer is that for su success for me, I'm gonna say it in the future chance because it ain't right now will be like enjoying my life, mm. enjoying the way that I've arranged my life. Mm. Like I love, I don't know if you guys follow Tanya Rapley, yes. um, but Tanya's always talking about like crafting the life that she wants, right? And I so much admire her for how she's done that because it's really, to me, just setting yourself up in different spaces, whether that's at home with the help that I have for my children who I absolutely love, um, and uh, or whether that is in business and the way that I've arranged my team to like execute and, you know, all the things. But right now I feel like I'm doing too much in general um, and and I need to set my boundaries and like figure out how to step out of these things, look at them on a micro level, macro level, and adjust. Yeah. And so success to me is when I can say I've done that and executed on that. Yeah. So yeah. I think to, to the point of success or achievement too, one of the questions I've been asking myself and talking about in therapy, um, I'm happy to be back in therapy y'all. So, Y'all gonna y'all gonna hear about it because I'm happy to be back because I because three years ago I didn't have the resources to do it. Um, that's real talk. When I moved out here, business was changing. I, I hadn't yet officially joined Brown Girl Jane, and you know I, I was traveling 200 days out of the year, shooting a like it was nuts, and I didn't have the resources both financially or time. Like like how am I investing this money? So you are gonna hear about therapy, but. One of the things that I have been t talking about and trying to get to is understanding what drives me. Yeah. And I think that when you get to a sense of clarity around what drives you, what moves you, mm -hmm. your idea of quote unquote success and how you achieve right. changes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm asking myself this now, like what drives me? And I think touching and connecting with people is a driver yeah, of mine and is a purpose too. of mine. Mm -hmm. And so then I'm also trying to think about like, how do I do that with the least amount of exertion of yeah. energy and exhaustion okay. for me? On that though, you do a, a IG live like every day at 6 a.m. <laughs> and then but I'm up early. PT. <laughs> but I'm up early. <laughs> If I'm not in this space of drinking too much, I'm up <laughs> early at five o'clock every morning anyway. Wow. So, yeah. so that, and, that and, and actually the IG Live is really a part of my routine. Yeah. So I host something called Morning yeah. Mindset every Monday through Friday and some Saturdays at 6.15 a.m. PST because it's, it's a part, good too. It's, it's a, thank she you. She put me on the books. Thank, yes, I'm like, yes, we coming in. So I, 
it's a part of what I do, and that's a part of my wellness practice mm, okay. because that is part of what fuels yes. me. So it's not it's, I I get a lot of sleep too. I go yeah. to bed every night at 9:30, girl. If you look at my calendar, oh, there's a, a there's an alarm that says go to bed at 9:30. There's one that says eat at one o'clock. There's one that do says you take the brown girl Jane. Uh, the tinctures, <laughs> absolutely. My rest drops all day. Um, that and, and actually, I hadn't been. I realized the other day I was feeling anxious. I was like, yeah. why am I feeling so anxious? I had not been taking yeah. my balance drops. Wow. Yeah. But other thing I heard you say though is that something that you do for others and I would say is even a part of like your brand I won't say your business but your brand is this 615 um, uh, IG live which is part of your wellness practice mm -hmm. so like I hear the more we can make the things that are you for know, sure the, the more we can integrate use yeah. yes integrate our our work or whatever into our wellness the better or your life your life yeah I, I think yeah that that was the other thing so I was just saying to Asa you know, when I first started doing television, I, I was doing a lot of fashion and beauty correspondent because mm -hmm. I was a beauty and a fashion editor. And so now when people reach out to me to do beauty and fashion, I don't, yeah. I, that's not what I do anymore. Yeah. Um, and, and that's okay, and it's not a bad thing. So I want to bring my life yeah. to my work. Yeah, girl. And so, like, who I really am, like it's like, win. I, because, you know, the crisscross of trying to figure out who you want to be today versus who you really are and whether or not that serves you to show up in that space. Girl, I'm like, that's a lot of brain capacity. <laughs> and I just yeah. don't be having it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just, I don't be having it. Yeah. I don't know. But how, so what is your wellness practice now? I know you walk, you do Yes, walk. that's We're my going wellness on a hike. practice. Okay, let's be clear. Yes. No, I, um, so last August, I remember the day, um, I was having a particularly rough week and it was a Saturday, I walk out of my house, this is, still pandemic I walk out of my house and two friends who live in my neighborhood like happened to be outside my door they were not looking for me one of them was walking her baby and it was my first pandemic walk like with other people right this was still like oh is that safe to walk around with folks um and I was like I guess we gonna walk so I walked with them for two hours and when I came back try to make a long story short but when I came back Tommy was like how was your walk I was like it was good he looked at my phone and showed me like my steps because mm -hmm. I didn't even know that was a thing and I had done like 14,000 steps or something. And I became really curious about my steps leading up to that. I was like at like between 1,000 and 3,000 daily. Wow. And I realized that that was like going from upstairs to downstairs to work and like not do anything else. And from that day on, I was like, I'm gonna do 10,000 steps a day. Cause it wasn't that hard. It made me feel really good. Getting outside was nice. And so that started me on a journey of of that being like a safe space for me, like a place where I can just, I feel good about something I've done for myself. And it's really small, y'all, because I, that, you know, Claudine with her fine self is in the back there <laughs> after three kids doing squats, doing, well, she's been doing it the whole, her whole life, but I don't have that baked into my life yeah. yet. Um, yeah. And so for me, these steps are something I can be proud of. I make myself do it every day. I've changed it to 8,000 just to be realistic, but that makes it even feel better when I do 10. So yeah. that's that's my wellness practice at this time. I think <laughs> all of us. I think we have to stop feeling guilty about doing anything that honors ourselves, mm -hmm. and even if it feels like it's dishonoring to someone else. Yeah. And I I say that not in a spirit of negativity, but mm -hmm. like we have to choose to honor ourselves. And I I think as women, if that means going on the walk, and the kids might not, you know. Mm -hmm. get something that they desire at that time, that's okay. If that means you choosing to, to sit in Savasana or lay in Savasana for however long, like whatever that is for yeah. you. And I think it starts with small steps. Yeah. It could be five or 10 minutes a day and then yeah. work your way up. This week was so rough, I like meditated for the first time. I was grateful, <laughs> but I literally got Deepak on Spotify mm -hmm. and sat on the floor and closed my eyes and did whatever he told me to do. But I was grateful for having the option, yeah. having it so accessible. Yeah. Um, so, yes. Something I do, um, so at night I take my rest drops from Brown Girl Jane. I think, I don't remember what we sent. Did we send Glow or Balance? I think we sent Balance. To me or to the, to, to everyone. The everyone. I, I think you either. get Balance. I think you get the Balance and your drops. Bags. Yeah, the <laughs> CBD drops. But I take rest at night, but also the other thing, this is a little secret, but not a secret. So on Spotify or on Apple, um, they have sound bowls, uh, like, for healing, mm -hmm. I listen to that at night. 
after you no 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 so I sleep to it yeah so I sleep to it so I play like sound bowls at night or if you like you know the raindrops like whatever or the ocean you do that because I think that they're the so what I've been trying to do is figure out you know and Kelly, the amazing traveler, like how do I bring some of these vacation moments into my life for yes. real? Yes. Right, you know what I mean? And so even if those, yeah. those small things, how do you bring that into life for real? And you know, so yeah. that's just something that makes I me feel it. well. And okay, hope. I'm gonna ask you a question and then I'm gonna go ahead and go to the audience. Perfect, yeah. So um, I just how, we're just talking like this. Yes, this, this is what I love about the space that we've created, honestly. Um, so I, I, I wanna know how black women have played a role in your success. Oh my gosh. Well, first um, and foremost, my grandmother and my mom who gave me license um, to be who I was even though they didn't often understand it. Mm. They really did not understand. My mom and I are actually dealing with something right now where she's just like, I don't, I don't get it, and I don't know, and I don't like it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Talk to you next week. <laughs> so them first and foremost, and my other grandmother mm -hmm. too, who passed, and then um, my best friend mm -hmm. and my best friends, and I think going to a school like Spelman just really. It really did. It really go ahead, did go ahead. <laughs> we'll give it up for all the HBCUs. All of them, but like I, I just being in this, um, being in the environment, I, that's what gave me the courage to sit at the tables I sat at yeah. later, you know, as a 25 year old dummy. Like, and I, I say that in the best possible way, but like, you know, every 25 year old is a mogul now, <laughs> right? And I was 20, right? Everyone's a mogul. And I, not, not, no, no, no slight, but. <laughs> But like at 25, like I realize now, like sitting at these tables, I didn't have necessarily the authority yet, but I had the confidence. Mm. And I didn't have the authority yet because I was still growing into that. The wisdom now, even now, like now I know when I don't even want to be at a table and I'm cool with it. Yeah. But like the confidence, and so Spellman nurtured that in me yeah. because I think being in spaces like this where you saw other women shine, mm -hmm. and that, that encouraged you and inspired you to shine mm -hmm. and also celebrate their shine. Yeah. So how about you? How if Oh, man. Black so women? Um, I, there's a story that I sh have shared because, oof, I'm going to try to make it the shortest version possible, y'all. But because of the fact that often we, as black women, as women, period, like we can often feel like we're in competition. I, oh, Lord, I'm trying to make this short. But in this business, the goal as a, as a film producer, I went to film school, um, is to like make movies or work for someone who's making movies and then eventually make movies with them, right? Um, and when I was at Film Independent, I was the assistant to the festival director there who was a, a producer and I had left Fox Searchlight where, the, where my boss was a producer and both of these women were like, love you so much, I'm gonna take you on all my movies and that never happened. For one reason or another, they didn't have the budget or whatever it was. And then when my boss, the festival director of the LA Film Festival left, uh, Stephanie Elaine came to be the festival director for LA Film Fest. Uh, brilliant, boys to men, uh, boys to men, um, um, boys in the hood producer, many other films, and I was offered the job as her assistant. Wow. And I'd been to this company so long that I was like, I don't want to be an assistant, assistant anymore. Again, yeah. I don't want to be her assistant mm -hmm. for that reason. That like I don't want to keep having that same dream mm -hmm. unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. um, I'd rather be her peer, you know, and mm -hmm. do something else in the company than like be her assistant. And so I passed on that and um, she hired someone who ultimately became her producing partner. Mm. And there were a lot of times where I was like. Dog, that could have been me. Yeah. yeah. And, but, but the short of it is that she hired someone who ended up being her, her producing partner, who went to Howard, who I never met at Howard, though we graduated a year apart, who, and I always, like, who became one of my best friends. Mm. Wow. Like, and I would not know her if I had not taken this, if I had not passed on that role mm. that she then got. Mm. And I mean, one of the closest people to me who's gotten me through so much. Mm. And a wonderful producer named Mel Jones, Melissa Jones, she's uh, got a film on Netflix right now called Really Love. Mm. Oh, I just watched that last night. Yeah. It was so beautifully she's shot. Amazing, and it's one it of many so films. It was so beautifully <laughs> shot. Not to mention, I mean, how in the heck you get <laughs> how you Kofi, how, how you get Michael, Kofi, yes. Michael, Michael Blair, Ely, Blair Underwood? All, all they not playing in, games. In Mel don't play games, y'all. I mean, obviously. <laughs> but I I I always share that That's because awesome. it was it was painful at yeah. times, but never. 
I was always so grateful that she was in my life. Yeah. And I knew that there was a purpose to how that all happened. So that is the best story I can tell mm, about what it means to just like love and support another black woman yeah. and, and know that there's a reason for whatever's going on with you. The other thing is so, is so that's so powerful, but I think the other thing that I have grown into over the course of the last, especially three or four years, which have been interesting years for me mm -hmm. at best, mm -hmm. challenging in hell at worst, but is that we all have our path. Yeah, And so for sure. I think like when we, yeah. when we lack on supporting someone else's path, we tend to think that that means that there's interference on our path. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not. That's just setting you up for your path. I'm, yeah. I'm you know, relationships like, you know, dating this amazing guy right now. Mm. And I'm, I told you he's obsessed with black love. Like when I told him I was doing this, he's like, you're doing a black love? Like he, like, wait, wait, is this being seen right now? Not right now, <laughs> not, not in real time, but it will be. Girl, let, let me she just tell you this. It. No, I, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. Wait, where's it gonna be? <laughs> this will be on the Black Love Plus app. It is free to download. Black Love Plus. Because he's amazing. He's wonderful. And and I no, he no, he's wonderful. Let me just tell you, he wants to have black love dates. Oh like, no, like I girl, love him. Girl, like literally he'd be like, you wanna come over and watch Black Love? And I'm like oh. Yeah, sure. Girl. <laughs> Popcorn, dinner, and black love. So I he love like, so let me just tell you. <laughs> He ain't been excited about nothing else I did <laughs> this last couple of weeks. He was like, oh, really? <laughs> so, oh um, no, really. <laughs> That's amazing. It, it, he, he, and, um, and I will say in that, and I, I don't know if he actually may have inspired, like even when I reached, like subliminally, like yeah, and subconsciously, because yeah. he talks about black love so much. And, anyway. I love him, let's be clear. <laughs> okay, are there any questions from you all? Oh, okay. Hello, Bree. Right away. We just met know, today. There's so many things that you guys have been talking about that have just struck so many chords with me. I think that I, over the years, have really identified with if I am successful. Mm -hmm. And and furthermore, making what I do for work who I am, right? And so y'all talked a little bit about, you know, bringing your life into work, mm -hmm. but I've been working on being more than my work, making my life like not just about what I do for money. So the question is how, <laughs> you know, how do you separate what you do from who you are? Do you have to, or is there a way to reconcile? That's a really good question. I think reconciliation is really up yeah. to the person. Um, but I, I personally, for me, recognize, especially being in the entertainment and media industry, there's danger in allowing a title to define who you are. Yeah. When the title leaves, when the job leaves, when the check stops, yes. you have to reconcile then. And that's a, that's a more difficult reconciliation. That audit, that's a timely audit. And so, and I also will say, my own personal experience is I always felt other. Even in the beauty and, you know, and I appreciate that there's an aesthetic and I love fashion because it's always been a way that I self-express, but I felt other. Mm -hmm. I felt other not because of the way I looked, not just because I was one of few black people then. I mean, and, I, and I'm so excited to see the Elaines of the world and the Kalanas of the world now. When I was, in, there, were very, yeah. there were very few of us, but I felt other because I had a heart and a spirit, and mm. I just didn't care about lipstick. Lipstick wasn't, wasn't the thing that spoke to me. It was a piece of what I liked to express, and so I just, I do think that the journey of getting clear about who you are, who are you when none of that is around? How do you show up with yourself first and with your creator? For me, like, this is a God thing, and I, I'm very unapologetic about that. This is a God thing for Taibo Shamp. But you know, how do you show up there? And then how does that inspire how you show up in the other spaces? Not the reverse. Mm -hmm. Because the people that will talk to you in certain spaces because you have a title but then not speak to you later, what are we gonna do with them? Mm. Oh, sorry, that's when Newark shows up. <laughs> I can't even help it. You know, that's when it's just like, and so I think that reconciliation yeah. for me was. I totally agree. I totally agree. And I yeah. think it's, it's might be 
different or easier for different fields, right? If you're just in like a job job, then it might be a little harder to, to separate yourself or to, to identify yourself within it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I happen to know obviously you're very creative. And so I do think that to Ty's point, like there's so many things that you can do that, that honor you and who you are um, within the things that you're creating for yourself and for others, you know? I also will add, I think that when, and it's, and it's not easy work, so I'm not like minimizing it at all or trivializing the process. Um, for me, it took, quite frankly, um, deciding that I didn't want to be in some spaces because they didn't feel right to me. Um, and it also, the flip is true. When you get clear about that and you do that work, it's easier to show up anywhere. And so one of the things that I think is really my superpower is that I'm, I'm consistent. So the same person you see on IG is really what you get in real life. Yeah. It's how I am with my family. You know, it's how I am with people on the street that I don't know. And so I, I think that that's important. I think I saw two hands. Claudine. Oh, now I see more hands. OK. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say, since you said you're now ready for Saidi, all movement is good movement. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Cody, I didn't tell you this. We're going to have to shoot a video for him and send it to him. You don't even know. Okay. He's on a plane right now. Listen, but I'm going to be Claudine's like, husband need to go over to my house and see Tommy, and they can shoot a video for him. No, no you're going to have to say You're going to have to say to him, like, hey, boo, hey. Hey, like, hey, boo, hey. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's try to, I want to answer questions before we move on. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Will you say your name? Because I knew everybody else. That's Lita. That's a very big compliment. I need some advice. For yes. I find it really difficult to separate business and what I need to do, um, not just for myself, to make money, all the things. But when I need to switch and be off and be on vacation mode and take mm. real time for myself, mm. I find it really difficult not to check my phone, not to even open my laptop. Is there any advice you can give someone that really mm -hmm. needs Mm -hmm. but to check out. To yeah. Where yeah. Everything else is not a distraction. Does that make sense? Cody, I need you to listen to this answer too. I have, but I'm about to answer. <laughs> listen, because I, I know, I know it now. I know it because I went on a vacation recently that like literally gave me life. Uh, you have to force it. Like you literally have to cut it off. For me, okay, uh, I won't say everybody, but for me, there was no like halfing. Like I couldn't just like, I'm gonna send a few emails and then I'm gonna have fun. It was like the time that I allotted for no, for no computer, no phone was so meaningful and and I poured into myself. So, so, so that's vacation, right? But you're also talking about just in general. You know, even for me, my walks, I have to be intentional about what am I listening to? Am I listening to music? Am I listening to a podcast? I take calls on my walks sometimes. I take calls on my walks during the week. She over here telling all my business. No, I definitely do, but that's because I prioritize. The walk is for me. Yeah. So if I'm going to do the walk, I might have to get work done. But if I'm, but if I'm intentionally doing something for the purpose of, of pouring into myself, then I shut it off. And, and that's recent, okay? I went on this vacation and I was like, oh, that's how it works. When it, I, I, I would add though, Lita, because I think when you're high functioning, um, and you are as well, which is, but we function, we function how we are trained to and how we condition ourselves to. So one of the things that has worked for me, like I said, everything is on my calendar, so go to bed is on my calendar. Yeah. Fitness, prayer, meditation on my calendar. Morning mindset at 6.15 on my calendar. So I think that, you also are tricking yourself ultimately with your high functioning self, right? <laughs> to say like, look, here's a priority for and to mm -hmm. me. 
Mm -hmm. And so like when I go on vacation and I'm not really the best at vacation because I'm running two businesses, but I do also um, keep blocks. So it's like I'll work for three hours. I tell my assistant not to schedule anything after this time. And so then that way I can honor the downtime. And also what, what ha has helped me, um, and I don't have children or family yet. I have seven godchildren. I love. I have seven godchildren. Um, two of them were here last week, and they were amazing, the 13 and 11-year-old. And I said to them, every day after 2 o'clock, I'm yours. Mm -hmm. And so I think the other thing is that as we condition ourselves, then we can condition other people. Yeah, yeah. Our clients, yes. our friends, yeah. our family. But if we don't condition ourselves first, we can't even set boundaries mm -hmm. for other people. Yeah. And that's the challenge. Like, we're that's always like, no, you do. I'm like... But we, we're not doing it, so try that first and, and see if that helps to set a rhythm for you, especially since I know that you're a scheduled person. We're going to take one more question, and then we're going to move on. Yes? Oh, an add-on. Oh, add okay. This is a highly functioning person right here. Yeah. Okay, she got three kids, a husband, and a very high-powered job. Yes, yes, Toy, and then we're going to take your question. So, um, last year was the first time in my life. I you got to speak up so I can hear you too, Toy. Last year I went to Kenya for four years, or for four weeks, and it was the first time I had ever done it, and I came back so refreshed, so recharged, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I love this. Like, I Therapy for Black Girls is a wonderful resource. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so my question for you was going to be, how did you find your therapist? Uh, therapy for Black Girls, and I, I had consults with five people. So yes. it's, it was nice. also an investment of time. And, but I set up 30-minute conversations or 45-minute conversations with some um, via Therapy for Black Girls. You can also tell a lot by their website and how you connect with them mm -hmm. and what their responses are back to you. Mm -hmm. um, but it's an investment of time, but it's totally worth it. I also had to express like my calendar shifts sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, so like being someone being open for that and like, but therapy for black girls, I literally am just obsessed with yeah. the concept. And again, I think the normalization of it, which is why I'm like, I'm talking about therapy. And anyone who's not familiar, it's a website, it's a social media page, it's yeah. a podcast, I think too. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take one last question because we do need to move on to the next conversation. Yeah. Have I met you before? Because you look so familiar to me. It's, really? Yes, it's so interesting. I was like, but okay. Hi, Simone. Well, you also look familiar to me. Okay. Too. Yeah, maybe. Um, but I'm hearing a lot of, about, like, you know, a lot of people in New York are successful career women. Um, and I think that is so aspirational and so beautiful. I'm someone who has a lot of interests, and it's been difficult for me to hold in mm. exactly what it is. And not that I have to focus on one thing, but like, figuring out at what stage in my life should I do this thing so that I can feel fulfilled in my work. So I'm wondering, yeah. have you either had, have either had 
that type of experience or that type of feeling and like focus? I'm going to say two things. One, I saw a lot of people in this room nodding. So hopefully you all will speak to each other. Yeah. Okay. Um, no. Yes, right. You're not alone. And some of these people that were nodding, I, have, I know what y'all do. So I feel like <laughs> some of y'all were like, I feel you. And some of y'all were like, I've been there. So make sure if you've been there, please, please talk to Simone after this. Um, but for me, it's a journey. Like at the end of the day, it, I, I certainly feel you. And I, I had one big passion that pushed through, which was black love. Mm -hmm. And it didn't really happen until I had a partner to help me make it happen, which was Tommy, my husband. Um, but I think that figuring out what you can do with those things that you're excited about um, on your own, like what you can do without help, what you can, like how can you execute on these things? What will it require of you? Um, and, and it's all about creating, like knowing the steps and then taking the steps. You, all, everything that we do, we have to figure out where to put our energy and how to prioritize. So it's, it's but you can do you can do it all, right? You just have to be mindful about when and how and what comes first. Simone, my answer is going to be a little bit tougher. <laughs> first, I'm going to ask you, how old are you? 28. Perfect. That makes sense that you're asking. People talk about turning 30. 28 is really the year where things start to crystallize and mm -hmm. you're really kind of moving into a deeper plane, really, truly. It, 28 is really that year. Um, I actually was going to write a book about this. I was going to write a book called The 28-Year Glitch. Do it. Ooh, do it. I'll be 44 now. I can't even remember. <laughs> but I'll be 44 in January, so I don't even remember. But I do remember that year crystallized, because that was the year Mary fell, my grandmother fell. It was just a lot happening. Became the editor-in-chief of Vibe Vixen. Started my business all the same year. It was crazy. The unpopular thing that I'm going to say that a lot of people don't share. One, we have talents and skills, right? We have talents, things that, and gifts that you're naturally gifted at. You have skills, the things that you develop. Then you have to get clear about what is your passion versus your purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. We live in this society now where everyone thinks that you're gonna make a profit off of your passion. You're not. Not everyone is going to be able to do that. What you need are outlets to facilitate so that you're supported yeah. That's fair. in your passion. It's a blessing to be able to do something you love that you're passionate about and earn a living that you can live off of. It is a blessing. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that we all don't deserve it. We do. But we have to get clear. We live in this society where everything, where everyone thinks you're going to be happy doing every single thing. You're not. So when you're clear about how your talents and your gifts can show up, get clear about your purpose. What are you meant to be doing? And how can your talents, your gifts support your purpose? And then do you have an outlet for your passion? Because interests are many things. But we're not going to earn livings off of all of our interests. You just have to have a place to facilitate those and honor those. Interests, I love reading. Shit, I don't, I mean, I read something last night, but I don't read nearly as much as I like to. It's on my calendar, read something. I don't always honor it, though. But. So, so we have to we have to have clear delineation yeah. around what that looks like, and be honest with yourself, and also recognize that in stages of our lives, it's different. So there might be a point in in, in your life in this sector where it's like all purpose, you know, you're hungered in on your purpose. There's another section, your passion, the things that which you must do. It's it's going to fluctuate, but are we honoring those different elements of ourselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and does that contribute to this wholeness? Right, um, and I and I think that that's really important for us because then you'll grant yourself a lot more grace. Yeah, you won't beat yourself up when someone looks like they're living their most passionate life on Instagram, <laughs> but yeah, they're part. lacking purpose. That part, or someone's living out all their interest, but they're not really making a prop. Whatever that is, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that we have to grant ourselves grace in that. Hi, thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. I'm so grateful that we got to do it together. Me too. Thank you to all of you. We have one more coming up and then it's like party time.